The Codex Gigas, also known as the Devil's Bible, due to the large illustration of the devil on the inside of the giant book, it is also connected to the legend surrounding its creation. It is largely thought to have been created in the early 12th century in the Benedictine monastery of Bodlegisa in Bohemia. According to legend, the Codex was created by a character known as Hermann the Recluse in the Benedictine monastery near Chirdim in the Czech Republic. The monastery was destroyed sometime in the 15th century during the Hussite Revolution. The Codex was thankfully rescued and taken to the Benedictine monastery in Brzezivnov. From 1477 to 1593, it was kept in the library of a monastery until it was taken to Prague in 1594 to form part of the collections of the Empire Rudolf II. In 1648, it was taken as war booty by the Swedish army. In 1697, it would escape destruction again when a fierce fire broke out at the royal castle in Stockholm, subsequently destroying the royal library. The codex was rescued from the flames by being thrown from a window. According to the vicar, Johann Eriksons, the codex landed on a bystander, injuring him quite badly. In September 2007, after 359 years of changing hands in numerous ways, the codex Gigas was returned to the National Library in Stockholm. But what makes the codex particularly special and worthy of further investigation are the characteristics within the writings of this enormous book, which astonishingly support the story of it being created in just one sitting. A National Geographic documentary included interviews with manuscript experts, who argued that certain evidence, in particular the handwriting analysis and the long-standing credit to Herman Inclusus, aka Herman the Recluse, indicate the manuscript was indeed, somehow, the work of just one scribe. According to the historical legend, which was already academically recorded by the Middle Age, the scribe was a monk who broke his monastic vows and was sentenced to be walled up alive. In order to avoid this harsh penalty, he promised to create, in one night, a book to glorify the monastery forever. This book would include all human knowledge. Near midnight, he became sure that he could not complete this task alone, so he made a special prayer not addressed to God, but to the fallen angel Lucifer, asking him to help finish the book in exchange for the monk's soul. The devil would accept this deal. Completing the rest of the manuscript, the monk would add the devil's picture out of gratitude for his help. Many specialists within the area of writing, forensic analysis, and also numerous replication attempts have indicated that the level of uniformity within the writings lean towards the impossible. Not only does it strongly indicate that the book was created in just one sitting, but is perfectly scribed throughout, a feat considered to be beyond that of human capabilities. The analysis also shown that the writings alone, if written by one person, would take over five years to complete, with the additional illustrations adding another 20. Yet it must be noted, it has been concluded on many occasions that no mere mortal is capable of such uniform writings within this time period. There would have inevitably been some form of evolution within the style. Of course, it must be remembered, although there is a highly compelling story attached to the origins of this giant book, its creation still largely remains a mystery. How big would you have to be for it to comfortably rest in one's lap? What sort of person, if of course it was a person, could have written the Codex Gigas? And how did they write it? It is most certainly one of the world's most mysterious books. The Necromantion Once used as a Greek temple of necromancy, devoted by the Greeks to their god of the underworld Hades and his female consort Persephone. This site was believed by the Greek devotees to be the door of Hades, allowing entry to the realm of the dead. Located at the meeting point of the Acheron, Pyriphlegethon, and Cocytus rivers, which were believed to have also flowed through the kingdom of Hades. With names given to the rivers, presumably by the Greeks, interpreted to be joyless, burning coals, and lament. Whilst other temples, such as the Temple of Poseidon at Teneron, the temples at Hermione and Cumae in Italy, and Heraclea within Pontos, 
were known to have been used for the practice of necromancy. It was the necromantion that was the most famous of them all. According to ancient Greek beliefs, while the bodies of the dead decayed in the earth, their souls would be released, traveling to this purported underworld via fissures within the earth. These spirits of the dead, according to the ancient Greeks, were said to possess abilities that the living did not have, including the power of precognition, the power to foretell the future. They therefore claim that these temples were erected by them in locations that were entrances to this mysterious underworld, used as altars for the believers of such to practice necromancy, a belief form of communication with the dead. This practice was attempted in order to receive prophecy. However, if one explores the architecture of such site, not only does this ancient Greek claim of construction become a clear, dubiously attested claim, but the evidence for highly advanced precision block building, now known as polygonal masonry, is discovered throughout the site. This existence of such sophisticated block building, which is not only found within and upon nearly every as yet unexplained ancient site upon the Earth, but is incredibly similar in form to that of many other ancient sites within Italy, specifically the ancient wall which can still be found surrounding the Acropolis of Alatre and at other sites, including within the ancient ruins of Delphi. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering is as yet unexplained by modern academics, strongly indicating that this ancient site was originally built by a civilization now lost to history. Furthermore, like the enigmatic metal clamps, whose remnants are to be found within a number of these same ancient sites that were originally used by this highly intelligent group, these once utilized to keep the stones in their fitted positions as they shifted and settled over the millennia. These clamps' design vary from continent to continent. Our reason for mentioning this curiosity is that although the sophisticated methods of creating these ruins often remain similar or the same, depending upon the continent they are found, is dependent on the style and material these methods are made from. This, to us, strongly suggests that these ancient structures may have indeed been built by the different races, found within these differing countries. The commanding force, the leading power of these groups, was the same worldwide power and font of this knowledge, who, with their clearly incredible technological prowess, successfully created such structures, and indeed the Necromantion, which, regardless of their tremendous age, has successfully survived a vast amount of millennia, successfully making it into our own modern ancestors' lives, predictably adapted due to their wondrous nature, into their historical belief systems, often being adopted surrounding spirituality, either for a theistic worship, burial, or in the case of the Necromantion, for the use of contacting the dead through the mystic teachings of necromancy. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling.